Hello everyone. Welcome to this third lecture of 19 SC PHY 301. And I say it's third lecture. I'm not counting the zeroth lecture in which I discussed the syllabus. Let's review what we have discussed so far. So the first point, important point that discussed was a polynomial which is written like P n x is an equation which is of the form of a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a n x raised to n. This n is called as degree of the polynomial. In this polynomial, all the a's are called as the coefficients, and all these coefficients can be zero except this a n as long as that a n is not not zero p n is called as polynomial of degree n when we set right hand side of this polynomial equal to zero that means when value of this variable x is such that the whole series gives us a value which is equal to zero then that x is called as roots of the polynomial there is a mathematical mathematical theorem which says that nth order polynomial has n number of roots. Why we discussed polynomials was because complex numbers were invented in attempt to find out the roots of polynomials, cubic polynomials to be exact, where cubic polynomials are polynomials of th of degree three. Then we discussed quadratic equation. The reason why dis we discussed quadratic equation is. Because quadratic equations are polynomials of second degree, and they are simplest polynomials who can lead to the complex roots. A polynomial is written generally in this form: a x square plus b x plus c. And the root finding out the root means we equate this to zero and find out values of x which satisfy this equation. Now, roots of quadratic equations are given by this formula: x is equal to Minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 ac divided by 2a. Now, if you look at this formula, in, we have a square root b square minus 4 ac. It may happen that b square is less than 4 ac, and in that case, the square root term will be less than zero, and therefore we have a square root of negative of real numbers. And then we can use the definition of i, which is equal to square root of minus one to write this negative of real number, which will turn out to be equal to two i. In last lecture, we considered a problem in which quadratic equation was used to solve the problem. The problem was from electrostatics. For today, this is the plan. I must emphasize the importance of today's lecture. It is because if you don't understand these topics, then it will be difficult to understand different functions and everything that we do in this chapter. What we want to discuss in this lecture are these four definitions, which are very important from uh, complex numbers point of view. Listen to the lecture and understand every definition here very carefully, because rest of the chapter is going to be based on these four definitions. The first definition is real and imaginary parts of complex numbers. Then we will discuss complex conjugate of a complex number. Finally, modulus and absolute values and argu arguments of complex number. Here in this lecture, we will only define modulus and arguments with mathematical formula. The geometrical interpretation of modulus as well as arguments will be discussed later in coming videos. So first, real and imaginary parts of complex number. What we do is we define a number i, which is called as imaginary number, and it is equal to square root of minus one. It is obvious why it is called as the imaginary number. It is because a real number, either positive or negative, when squared, always gives us a positive number. But here, if we square i, we get minus one, which is not possible as far as i is real, and therefore it is not definitely not a real number. So we define i like this, and then a complex number can be written as z is equal to x plus i y. This z is a common notation to denote a complex number, just like small r is used for real numbers. Z is to denote a complex number. In this complex number z, 
this x is called as real part of complex number z and y is called as imaginary part of the complex number z keep in mind that both x and y are real numbers so this is how you define real and imaginary parts of complex number again it is emphasized here both real and imaginary parts of complex number are real if z is equal to 4 plus 3i then imaginary part is not 3i but imaginary part of z is equal to 3. Why this is important will be clear in a moment when we consider the modulus of complex numbers. Now let's consider a few examples. Suppose I have z1 which is equal to 4 minus 3i. Now can you tell me what is real part of z1? It is 4 and what is imaginary part of z1? It is now minus 3. Let's consider another complex number z2 which is minus 5 plus 3i. Now what is z2? It is now minus 4 and imaginary part of z2 is plus 3. I think it is pretty much simple that given a complex number you have to find out the term which is not multiplied by i and that becomes the real part of the complex number and then you find out another real number which is multiplied by i which becomes the imaginary part of that complex number. Next definition that we want to see today is complex conjugate. Complex conjugate by definition is if z is equal to x plus i y where x is real part and y is imaginary part and both x and y are real numbers then complex conjugate of this complex number z is denoted either by z bar or it is denoted by z star different references use different notations z star or complex conjugate of this complex number z is obtained by reversing the sign of imaginary part so here z star is going to be equal to x plus we now have to reverse the sign so i'll keep i as it is an imaginary part of this complex number is y so therefore complex conjugate will have the imaginary part which is minus y so you keep the real part as it is it is unchanged what you change is the sign of imaginary part and that becomes the complex conjugate of given complex number so just keep in mind if z x plus i y is a complex number then z star or complex conjugate is obtained by reversing the sign of that complex number which is x minus i y this is also a very important definition let's now consider a few examples let's say z1 is equal to minus 2 plus 3 i what is z1 star or what is complex conjugate of z1 now it is minus 2 minus 3i so you simply reverse the sign of the imaginary part of the complex number suppose z2 is 5.2 plus 6i what is z2 star now it is 5.2 minus 6i suppose we have a complex number z3 which is equal to minus 4 minus 3i what is complex conjugate of z z3 now it, it is denoted by z3 star it is minus 4 plus 3i so all you do is keep the real part as it is and reverse the sign of imaginary part to obtain the complex conjugate of a complex number the next definition that we want to see today is modulus or absolute value of complex number we will see why it is called as absolute value in next lecture when we discuss the geometrical interpretation of modulus in this lecture we are going to see how mathematically modulus is obtained suppose z is equal to x plus i y is the complex number where x is real part and y is imaginary part modulus of complex number z it is denoted by these two vertical bars about z so modulus of complex number is 10 equal to square root of x square plus y square so you square the real part 
add it to square of imaginary part and then take the square root of the sum this is called as the modulus of complex number now remember even if i is called as imaginary number for all intents and purposes when you multiply it with a real number you can treat it as any other real number and the product can be calculated like this for example let's consider a few examples here why i am discussing this kind of multiplication will be clear in a moment suppose i want to multiply i by say 2i now i definitely is an imaginary number which is square root of minus 1 but i will treat it as any other real number and multiply it to obtain 2 into i square now once this product is calculated we have to use the definition of i so that i square is equal to minus 1 and plug that here so you, you get minus 2. Similarly if you want to multiply i cube by say i again you treat i as any other real number find out the product which is going to be i raised to 4 now use the definition that i square is minus 1 so this is going to be i square into i square which is equal to minus 1 into minus 1 and therefore this is equal to 1. So just keep in mind that you can multiply i by a real number or by a complex number just like you multiply the real numbers. Why I discuss this is because of this reason. Suppose I have a complex number z which is written here. Its complex conjugate z star now is given by x minus i y all i need to do is reverse the sign of imaginary part and now let's try to find out the multiplication or product of z with z star so i'm taking a complex number z which is x plus i y then i'm taking the complex conjugate of that complex number and multiplying the two numbers so z into z star is going to be x plus i y which is nothing but this z and z star is x minus i y now i'll expand these brackets so what i get is x square minus i into x y plus i into x y minus i square into y square now these two terms minus x y and plus x y so they are cancelled and what we are left with is x square minus i square into y square but i square is nothing but minus 1 and therefore what we get is x square plus y square therefore when I multiply z into z star and it is going to be true in general no matter what is your complex number doesn't matter whether x or y have positive or negative signs when you find out the product of z and z star this will always be equal to x square plus y square and now by definition modulus of complex number is square root of x square plus y square and therefore this is nothing but square root of z into z star always keep in mind that modulus of any complex number is always a real number why is it so because modulus of complex number is calculated by finding out x square plus y square now x and y are both real numbers so even if one of them or both of them are negative their square is always going to be positive and therefore x square plus y square this sum will always be positive and we are taking now square root of a positive real number and therefore it has to be a real number one more thing about the modulus is that it is always positive also why because for the same reason modulus is given by x square plus y square and x and y both are real so irrespective of whether they are positive or negative what we have is square root of a positive real number and therefore it has to be positive these two facts are very important when we consider the geometrical interpretation of modulus of a complex number we'll see that in next lecture now let's consider a few problems suppose z1 is 4 plus 3i z1 
mod now is going to be square root of 4 square plus I just have to consider the imaginary part which is 3 and square it 3 square so this is going to be equal to square root of 25 which is equal to 5 let's consider another number z2 which is minus 2 plus 5i now mod of z2 is equal to square root of minus 2 square plus 5 square which is equal to 4 plus 25 which is 5.38 let's consider another example z3 which is equal to say minus 4 minus 3i now mod z3 is equal to square root of minus 4 squared plus minus 3 squared which is equal to 16 plus 9 which is also equal to 5 now if you consider another th numbers z4 which is minus 4 plus 3i or z5 which is 4 minus 3i then all these numbers z1 z3 z4 and z5 all of them will have the same modulus which is equal to 5 so mod z1 is going to be same as mod z3 is going to be same as mod z4 which is also same as mod z5 so different complex numbers can have the same modulus now let's go to the next definition which is argument of complex number again let's consider z which is equal to x plus i y a complex number real part of this complex number is equal to x and imaginary part of the complex number is y i by definition is the imaginary number which is equal to square root of minus 1 argument of complex number is defined like this it is tan inverse of y by x so this is how you define argument of complex number how do you find out argument once again to find out argument of a complex number you first find out the ratio of imaginary part and real part and then take tan inverse of that ratio this is how you get the argument of a complex number there is very important geometrical interpretation for the argument of complex number we'll see it later in next lectures but you can already see that argument is an angle because you are taking tan inverse of a real number it is angle and that angle is generally written in radians for example if you have theta i'm just considering an example which is equal to 60 degrees and suppose this theta is an angle which is argument of, of a given complex number then while you write the number theta as the argument of some complex number z then it is written as pi by 3 radians where all of you know that pi is equal to 3.14 and it is irrational number the series continues how do you convert a number theta which is given in degrees Two radians let's quickly review that this theta which is in degrees if I want to write it in radians what I do is I multiply it by pi and divide it by 180 and the number is then converted to radians similarly suppose I have another angle theta prime which is in radians how do I convert that to degrees I have to multiply that angle by 180 degrees and then divide it by pi and this gives us angle theta prime in degrees now this is because pi radians is equal to 180 degrees I am reviewing it so that it is helpful later when you find out argument of different complex numbers
Arguments are actually rotational angles. More on this later when we discuss the geometry of complex numbers. Let's now quickly review what rotational angles are. Let's consider this figure. In this figure, this is x-axis and this is y-axis. A rotational angle is angle made by this red ray with positive x-axis. So if I rotate positive x-axis in this direction along counterclockwise direction, then I can reach this red ray. And when we consider rotations which are counterclockwise or anticlockwise, then that angle is considered to be positive. Similarly, if we consider this ray, it is now obtained by rotating positive x-axis clockwise and therefore this angle is negative. In some cases, there can be a little ambiguity about the angles. For example, let's consider this angle. Suppose this angle made by the ray is 30 degrees with positive x-axis. Now this ray can be either obtained by rotating positive x-axis along clockwise direction by 30 degrees and get that ray. In that case, this angle would be minus 30 degrees if we consider that direction. Similarly, the ray can also be obtained by rotating positive x-axis counterclockwise along this direction. And if it is rotated like this, then this angle becomes plus 330 degrees. Now, which one of them is correct? Both of them are correct depending on what conventions you use. One can choose any convention. One of them can be this interval, closed interval 0 to 360 degrees. It can also be written as 0 to 2 pi radians if we are writing down the angle in radians. This is one convention which can be used. The other can be from minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees or if I am writing it in radians it is minus pi radians to plus pi radians so in, in the first case when I write 0 to 360 interval then I always consider angle which is counterclockwise and therefore the angle is always positive if I use the first convention if I am using the second convention then I consider rotation like this for this region for rays in third and fourth quadrant we consider the clockwise rotation and therefore the angle is negative and for first and second quadrant the angle is considered to be positive and therefore the rotation is counterclockwise we will stick to the second convention where we will i'm sorry this interval has to be closed half open interval so these are the rotational angles now finding out argument can be a bit tricky business sometimes we will discuss why it is so in the following slides in this lecture we will be putting some rules to find out the argument when we discuss geometry of complex number or argand plane then it will be clear why the rules are the way they are so here Let's first consider a complex number z which is x plus y i. What I am trying to write here is x and y are real numbers and therefore they can be positive or negative. But when I write mod of x and mod of y that means both of them are positive. So here whenever we have a complex number for which real part of the complex number and imaginary part of the complex number both of them when are positive then argument is always a rotational angle in first quadrant so whenever you see this where x and y are both are positive you have to make sure that when you calculate argument of this complex number by this formula tan inverse of y by x make sure that this angle lies between 0 to pi by let's consider the second rule now second case now when the complex number is of this form z is equal to minus mod x minus mod y i that means real part of the complex number is negative 
and imaginary part of the complex number is also negative then argument of that complex number which is calculated by this formula tan inverse of y by x is always in the third quadrant special care is to be taken when you are calculating argument because when you calculate argument by using this formula and use calculator to find out the argument what will happen is the calculator will always give answer which is in the first quadrant but it may happen that your complex number is like this both real and imaginary parts of the complex number are negative and then you may then you should make sure that you write the angle in this interval now when the angle is in this quadrant in third quadrant there are two conventions that can be followed you can either write the angle as a positive angle by considering the counter clockwise rotation or the rotation can be considered in clockwise direction and in that case the angle would be negative so depending on which conventions you are using either this interval 0 to 360 degree or minus 180 degrees to plus 80 degrees you have to write the angle accordingly as we have already said now both of them are correct way to write the angle now suppose the complex number is mod x plus sorry minus mod y into i that means real part of the complex number is positive and imaginary part of the complex number is negative in that case the angle is always in this is in fourth quadrant that means it should be in the range of minus pi by 2 to 0 in the conventions that we have now the next rule suppose z it's such that it is minus mod x plus i into mod y so that real part of the complex number is negative and imaginary part of the complex number is positive in that case the angle is always in second quadrant so it should lie in the range pi by 2 2 pi let's quickly go through the rules this is the first rule if real part of complex number is positive and imaginary part is positive then the argument is always in the first quadrant if real part and imaginary part both are negative then then argument always lies in third quadrant if real part is positive and imaginary part is negative then then the argument lies in fourth quadrant and finally if real part is negative and imaginary part is positive the complex number lies in second quadrant beware that if you are using calculator to find out argument of the complex number by this formula tan inverse of y by x in that case calculator will give you the answer only in first quadrant for both these cases for this case as well as this case calculator will give you the same answer similarly for these two cases again the calculator will give you the same answer for this and this the answer is same in the previous case the answer the answer is always given in the first quadrant by the calculator and similarly for second case the answer always is given in this fourth quadrant but now with this rules at least for now you can find out in which quadrant the complex number lies the reason behind these rules will be clear when we consider geometry of complex number in argand plane let's consider a few examples now suppose we have a complex number z which is equal to 1 plus root 3i and i want to find out argument of this complex number z then it is tan inverse of root 3 by 1 and according to calculator the angle given is pi by 3 radians remember whenever we are considering argument it is generally written in radians and since both real part and imaginary part are positive this angle should be in first quadrant so the angle is pi by 3 radians for this particular case 
for z is equal to 1 plus root 3i. Let's consider another case. Suppose z is equal to 1 minus root 3i. And if when I calculate argument of z by this formula tan inverse of minus root 3 by 1 it is it turns out to be equal to pi by 3 minus pi by 3 radians but now we have to first fix the quadrant of the argument here since real part is positive and imaginary part is negative according to our rules should fall in this quadrant now for z is equal to 1 minus root 3i it can either be written as minus pi by 3 radians when I consider the rotation along clock, clockwise direction or it can also be written as a positive angle which is equal to 5 pi by 3. Let us now consider z equal to minus 1 plus root 3i. Now argument of z is tan inverse of root 3 by minus 1 or minus of root 3 by 1. So the calculator will give you angle which is equal to minus pi by 3 radians. But now we have to take help of the rules we have written. In this case, since the real part is negative and imaginary part is positive, the angle should lie in the second quadrant and therefore for this complex number, so the complex number is minus 1 plus root 3i and the complex number is this where the angle is now pi minus pi by 3. So the angle is equal to 2 pi by 3. It can be also written in degrees which is 120 degrees. Now you can see that this is the ray and the rotational angle is going to be this which is equal to 120 degrees. Let's consider one more example. Z is equal to minus 1 minus root 3i. Now if you use calculator to find out the argument of this complex number which is tan inverse of root 3 by 1 now because both of them are negative the ratio is going to be positive and the calculator will then give the answer which is pi by 3 radians but that is not the case we have to use the rules we have when real and imaginary part of the complex number are negative the complex number lies in third quadrant so in this case the angle is actually minus pi plus pi by 3 so it is equal to minus 2 pi by 3 or it can be also written as a positive angle if pi plus pi by 3 and then it will be 4 pi by 3. Let's summarize what we have covered in this lecture. We first defined real and imaginary part for a complex number z equal to x plus i y. Real part of this com complex number is equal to x and imaginary part of the complex number is equal to y. Then we define complex conjugate. If z is x plus i y then complex conjugate of that z which is written which can be written as z star is obtained by reversing the sign of the imaginary part so is x minus i y then we define modulus modulus of a complex number is equal to square root of x square plus y square this can also be calculated as square root of z into z star so if you multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate and take the square root of the product it also gives you the same quantity x, x square plus y square by definition modulus of complex number is all is always real and is positive and then we define argument argument of a complex number z is obtained by taking tan inverse of ratio of imaginary part to real part 
An argument is rotational angle. As we saw, calculating it can be a tricky part. We have a few rules and by using those rules, we can find out the argument of the complex number. So by using these rules and this equation, we can find out argument of a given complex number. We will discuss more about modulus and argument in next lecture. In next lecture, we will see the geometry of complex number. We will define the argand plane and we will see the meaning of what modulus and arguments of complex numbers are. And we will also see why the rules are the way they are. If you have any queries regarding the topics that are covered in the video lectures, you can, you can put them as comments. If you have officially enrolled for this course, then I recommend that you go to the online portal. You can find out other resources on that portal. You can have more problems for practicing on the portal. That's all for this lecture. Thank you for watching it.